I'm here at the Center for Art and Design at the College of St. Rose to speak with artist Susan Meyer and learn more about her incredible sculptures. Follow me. I work with wood and I do a lot of laser cutting of slats that go, that kind of cover the wood structure. I also make smaller sculptures and I do some wall, some flat wall work as well. A lot of the work is inspired by utopian communities, um, ones that sprang up in the mid 1800s as a response to the Industrial Revolution, mainly in the um, Northeast portion of the United States. Utopia was in probably the earliest piece. The model utopian communities look a little bit like architectural models, and they're occupied by HO scale figures that are all nude. <laughs> and the figures would either be together in scenarios where there seemed to be a bit of tension, or they would be alone and kind of in a state of ennui. So they, so they had kind of a curious relationship to the utopian community. So I'm interested in that, that idea of great possibility and great um, potential, and then the kind of human weakness sort of mashing up against each other. So I grew up in Utica, New York, and would go to Munson Williams Art Institute quite a lot, and there was that Thomas Cole series, Voyage of Life, and I was interested in the way it goes through these stages of, of sort of a sense of a rise and fall. And in making the um, pieces Newtopia together, there's one called The Enterprise, there's a little bit of this sense of a rise and a fall of these utopian communities, which indeed, over and over and over again, these communities would spring up and then, and then dismantle relatively quickly. I wanted to start making singular sculptures rather than installations. I just thought that would be kind of challenging in a way. With pieces like Newtopia and Together, the exterior shapes of the individual sculptures seem to talk about the landscape and, and topography. And I, I wanted to take that and have it be the interior of the sculpture and have a more geometric kind of um, boundary around the pieces. So those pieces, for instance, shaft. The topography within them is all taken from um, areas where utopian communities sprang up um, in the Northeast. So, so it's all from maps that I would turn into um, Adobe Illustrator files and then laser cut each individual section. I was going to be in a show um, dealing with scholars' rocks, and scholars' rocks are sort of these, um, from centuries in Asia, scholars and poets and painters, um, philosophers would have these small natural rocks on their desks, sometimes on kind of elaborate stands, and these rocks would be sources of inspiration. I started to make plinth because I thought of these elaborate stands that, this, that the rocks would sometimes sit within or on. So I made plinth and making the structure almost like more elaborate than the little kind of offhand stand-ins for scholars rocks that sit within and on it. And plinth is called plinth as, you know, plinth being a stand for a sculpture. So the stand for the sculpture kind of became the sculpture in plinth. I have for many years been making these tiny little sort of scruffy sketches in my tiny little sketchbook, kind of an, an idea for a sculpture, and they have a real two-dimensional, like doodle-like quality. 
So I thought I'll just start with the sketch and kind of look at the sketch and work in wood and kind of make it directly from the sketch rather than making a three-dimensional model from the sketch and then kind of sizing it up, you know, things that I would tell my students to do. <laughs> For instance, I thought I'm just going to go straight from the sketch. Um, and it became kind of an interesting way of working. Um, so plinth is directly from, there's a little sketch that looks quite a, actually, that's very offhand, very doodle-like, but looks quite a bit like the final piece. Initially, I make a wood structure from these little drawings in my sketchbook and tape on to each individual plane a black strip of construction paper. Mark it all up with it, the information I need. Then I take it all off and scan each piece of the pattern and put them in the Illustrator and trace them. Then I cut each plane from different types of different colors of material, different um, painted wood and collaged wood and put that on each of the individual planes of the piece. So these pieces will have, you know, 200 planes on them. Scholar's Rocks. Part of the reason they're interesting to me is that they're these objects of inspiration or transport to somewhere for the scholar or the poet or the writer. And I guess as artists, we're hoping that what we make will likewise inspire or transport.